goodbye tires. My name is Alex and if you're new to the channel, welcome. In today's video, I'm filming with not one, but two almost identical, but different Turbo Trans Ams. These are both 2001 WS6 Trans Ams. They both run nines. One of them is mine and one of them belongs to this guy right next to me. Everybody, this is Will. Hey guys. Okay, so Will's car is seriously ridiculous, and I know that I don't really film as much as I should with my Turbo Trans Am. I figured I'd make up by filming with two cars uh, that have so much in common, uh, but also have a ton of differences. So in this video, we're gonna talk about kind of the approach that we took to build our cars. Uh, we're obviously gonna go over modifications, track times. Uh, we're gonna go over cost. I know a lot of guys are interested in uh, what is this? Uh, what is running nines having a thousand horse? power and stuff like that actually cost real world and a lot of this I did myself a lot of this will did itself uh, so that uh, that part of it is uh, just such a big part of building a car uh, I'm also gonna be splicing in some fun clips from earlier today uh, that we filmed in the middle of nowhere Indiana I mean Mexico uh, so you're gonna see clips like this one just looking at our ugly mugs the entire time. Uh, this video is going to primarily focus on Will's car, but if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about my Trans Am, because you're going to see some of that in this video as well, I will link down below a playlist. I have about five videos on my car, uh, running nines at the quarter mile drag strip, putting down like 850 tire horsepower. Uh, I have a really cool video on my top five coolest modifications uh, and some other stuff. So if you guys are interested, definitely check that out but without further ado let's get into this beast this absolute insane street car and I got to start off will with the exhaust I know this is uh this is very similar to my car but it is a lot uh, more quiet so what exhaust are you running what are we what are we rolling with do you, I know you have dual modes and all that kind of good stuff right so I have an electric cutout and um, it's a four inch downpipe that tapers to three inch and it okay. just goes out to a uh, standard magnaflow cap so that's with it going through the Magnaflow, and honestly, it sounds like a totally stock F body with a normal cat back exhaust. Uh, then this clip is just normally driving by with the cutout open. And I hope that the camera catches that as well as you can hear it in person, but you can just hear this turbo just whistling all the time. Uh, really, really cool. Turbo kit. I know our turbo kits were made by the same place, Kentucky Turbo and Performance or whatever. Uh, guys, you may have heard of them from years ago. The shop shut down. Was, there's was a lot of drama there. Will and I got lucky though because uh, we both ordered our kits like a long, long time before, ago. Yeah. And before he kind of uh, mishandled some money, let's put it that way. Uh, this kit though is top notch. This is a full tubular header. So tell us about the turbo kit a little bit. Yeah, so it's a stainless works turbo header and they are face forward and then there's a crossover and a downpipe that you know completes the hot side. Okay, and what turbo are you running? It's a precision? So the pr the turbo is a precision. It's a PT8285 uh, CEA, and it is a little bit of an oddball turbo size for these applications. Usually guys go a little bit bigger, go a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, I got this turbo off of a buddy that has a Supra. Okay, well, I mean, it spools up instantaneously. It feels just like mine. Um, and then I have a feeling I have a feeling that has to do a lot with the fact that we're both running, I think, a similar salt converter. I have a 3000 Vigilante. What is in this thing? It feels very tight. So yeah, the, the converter that's in this is just a Pro Yank 3400. Okay. Converter, so yeah, yeah nothing feels, too special. It feels awesome. I mean, you could seriously like give the keys to your grandma with the cutout closed, drive this car, and it just, it's totally stock, guys. I mean, it feels stock. Let go of the steering wheel, straight as an arrow. I mean, in that sense, it is just like my car where you can drive this car anywhere you want. It is just absolutely perfect and just dead balls reliable, to be honest with you. Uh, some other highlights of this car is that it is running a factory aluminum, the original aluminum engine, the engine block 
that came in the 2001 uh, Trans Am, which is kind of awesome. Like a lot of guys like myself go to iron blocks, um, but to be honest with you, I didn't go to an iron block because I had an issue with the strength of the actual block. Uh, my, my whole ordeal was my engine was still in good shape and they yeah. just demand a lot of money. So I was able to sell my aluminum engine, which still worked perfectly, even though it had like three years of like 175 shot going through it. Uh, and I sold it for like 1200 bucks and then I put that money uh, towards a junkyard six liter iron block and then four rods and pistons. But you obviously took a different route, so you have the numbers matching aluminum block. Yeah. And what, what did you guys do to this engine? Yeah, so when we pulled the motor, we did have the choice of selling it, buying a cheaper one, and honestly, maybe that's something I would have done a little differently. Right. But I wanted to keep the original block, uh, so we sent the motor off. I had uh, Wisco um, pistons and Eagle H beam rods okay. put in it. And Dude, just like mine, I have yeah. the, the same pistons probably, and yeah. uh, I have the Cali's rods, about nine and a half to one compression on mine. What, yeah, I'm about nine and a right? half to one. Okay, and, and, and guys, the, he is running full E85. Uh, he tunes this himself on HP tuners, and out here in Indiana, E85 is plentiful, as it is in Chicago as well, though I'm running 93 octane uh, with uh, dual nozzle methanol injection. I'm spraying a ton of meth. It's completely dependent. Knock on steering wheel, I haven't had any issues. I'm running a really nice alcohol uh, alky control kit, um, but I'll admit, I do want to go E85. It's so forgiving, it's almost yeah. impossible to detonate. You're running like 20 pounds of boost and 20 degrees of timing uh, with no issues. You went, what, five no years care. before having a refresh? Yeah, so this motor, I've had it in this car for about five years with the turbo on okay. it. And um, the first year I was on 93, but the subsequent years okay. were all E85. Wow, I and I never see knock on this car. I mean, I have knock sensors. That's something I do monitor for. Right. But I mean, with E85, it's so forgiving and so Very knock cool. resilient. I got to do really that. And it. while we've been filming a little bit today, uh, I've kind of gotten the, the the smell of E85 and it's uh it's unique. I know probably a lot of you guys know what it smells like, but I'm honestly not too familiar with the 85. I've just been running the pump gas and the methanol for so long. That's kind of what I know. Um, but yeah, I want to do the 85 one day. I just don't want to put the money into the fuel system, but that is for another video. Uh, a couple other uh, pretty cool things about this car. It is running a very, very strong, uh, you said a strange uh, S60, whatever they call it, rear uh, end, right? Yeah, so it's a it's a S60 rear end. It's basically okay. a Dana 60, Dana but it 60, is a very right. strong rear end. Okay, now. and I'm running the Mosher 9 Inch, which everyone kind of thinks they're very comparable. Yeah, I'd say. Uh, what gears are out back? Uh, so I have a 354 uh, True Track in the back. Okay, cool, cool. And I'm running a 325. I don't know about you, but I, if I just stay at like 65, 70, I can do 20 miles per gallon, uh, 22 miles per gallon, something like that. What do you, have you ever calculated it? I know E85 is yeah. going to be way worse, but. Well, so here's the interesting thing. So with my car, um, when I'm cruising, I'll cruise at a little bit lean, not too lean, but okay, just a good. little bit. But I'll get good gas mileage out of it. I'll probably somewhere around like 17 18 miles per gallon okay and i don't know about you but when i built my car my primary focus was actually fuel economy yeah <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> why would you do that <laughs> i have messed around with a lean burn yeah. to try and like eke out i'd love to say like i run nines and i get like 25 miles per gallon but my car used to be a six speed and i get like 31 it was yeah. nuts uh but guys I i'm sure you want to know what will's car uh runs in the quarter mile mine ran a nine seven as you guys probably know <laughs> is this totally legit streetcar. So yeah, my best uh, pass out of it was a 912 at 148.8 miles per hour. Jesus. And that's with a 1260 foot, and this thing will dead hook. Dude, um, and these are like four year old, what tires are back here? They're the uh, the 275 Pro Radials. They are four years old. That's And insane. I did go to the track last month and I was still cutting uh, 12, 1360 foots out of it. Okay, so this is the clip from like last month, and check out this wheelie. This thing wheelies really 
race like none other, and that was on a low boost. You were having boost controller issues, right? And you were only running, what, I was 16 pounds? Yeah, so I had a small chip in the top of my wastegate, so I was no. bleeding off any extra boost I was okay. trying to command. I was only running 16 <laughs> pounds of boost and about 18 degrees of timing, um, and I was cutting consistent 9.3s, 9.3. Uh, uh, and that's seconds. obviously with pulling a wheelie. Yeah, with pulling So we know wheelie. that, I mean, you just add in as normal 20 degrees yeah. of timing, 20 pounds of boost. And yeah. if we dial in the suspension a little bit more, because wheelies obviously kind of hurt you as far right. as quarter mile time, guys, there's no way this isn't an eight second car. I have no doubt you're probably gonna run eights this year. Yeah. I'll probably make a video for you guys. Uh, so this car is just honestly at a whole new level from my car. They weigh about the same, right around 3,900 pounds. Uh, Will has definitely gone a lot more serious. Like, as you can tell, this thing has uh, a full roll cage. It's crazy harness. Like, this is just the safest I've ever felt in an F-body. Um, no AC and stuff like that, but you can still just, you can put the AC back on this car. Oh, right? and yeah, it will about. fit. It's right. just a matter of me wanting or having the drive to right. do it. Uh, so yeah, guys, uh, just a total, just insane street car. Eight seconds, basically. Those wheelies, I can calm them down. I was just putting on a show that day because my boost control wasn't uh, responding the way I wanted to. Right. So the next time I go out to the track, I do have that resolved. Now I have a new wastegate in place. Right, right. So I will be so, calming down the front. Oh, uh, dude, this thing um, is just going to rock out, man. Yeah, we're so, going to be hunting for eights. I don't know about you, but one thing that a lot of people always ask me, and I try and cover a lot of my videos, is real world cost. Um, so I did a little, I did some math last night on my car. This is without the car. This is without considering like factoring in the last 15 years of ownership where I've blown up engines and transes and gone through turbo kits because honestly, I don't even want to know how much total I put into the car, like fixing and modifying it. I'm sure it's well into the six figures uh, as I'm sure a lot of you guys probably know if you've done this kind of work. Uh, but in my current setup, doing a lot of the work myself, I send the trans out to finish line to get the trans you know, built. I, do, I sent the, the engine out for some of the machine work, but I do a lot of the assembly, R&R. I built like probably half of the turbo kit myself at this point. Um, I think I have about $30,000 in my car. And just quickly, that's like a $5,500 engine, $5,000 trans with converter, $2,500 in the rear end, $2,500 in the fuel system, $2,500 in the suspension. You know, blah, blah, blah. So miscellaneous. I've calculated it out to be about 30. Now, I know you have the safety stuff. You have like the awesome Viking struts and shocks on this. So you have kind of a higher dollar build than me, but ballpark, what do you think you have into this without the car? Yeah, so I think I'm very similar, but it's a bit more. I, I think I'm probably around $40,000 okay. with everything. And I'm trying to use as much of the premium stuff as I can. Right. I know I can go a little cheaper on things right. and still get the performance out of them. Right. But I look for buying reliability. So like right. in the transmission, it was a $5,000 transmission, but it's a Jake Stage 5. Right, and, and how many years have you gone without a refresh? Oh, it's been in the car for the last five years. Okay, and, and so same I deal. I it. went, yeah. I was putting down like eight to 900 wheels horsepower with my finish line transmission and finish line chalk over there is awesome he lives right oh, by me guy. ships trans is like all over the world I went five years without a refresh and then fine actually I ran 970 my best time with it kind of bouncing the limiter um so then I had a refresh and I need to go back to the track honestly and run better I think I think mine will do a nine five easily uh, but yeah I mean you go with some good parts and you can go you know I went we both went about five years on the engine and the trans before a refresh which is pretty amazing for these types of horsepower numbers now obviously so you can go a couple different routes. You can go the route of like buying a Hellcat or like a Demon right now, doing a pulley and a tune and whatever, and running nines yep. roughly about the same, you know, what these cars run about, um, which is cool. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to just kind of do a pulley and They're call it a day. Cars. Like the yeah. amount of time I put into my car is insane. The amount of frustration, blood, sweat, and tears, as they say. And honestly, a lot of tears, like when you go to a track and blow up a forged motor or something, yeah. that is not a good day. Uh, but it's it'd be really cool, I think, to just kind of do some basic mods and run, run nines. But then on the other end of the spectrum, there are a lot of guys out there, a lot of guys watching, a lot of like the sloppy mechanic type of guys yeah. that are doing stock 5.3s with a Borg Warner turbo for 800 bucks, E85, a really light car, and they're running just as fast as us. Right. So like, you can go so many different routes, guys, yeah. with these builds. It's insane. It's kind of like uh, everybody has their own preference. Like I had my car for so long that I've almost kind of like nickeled my, and dimed myself to death. I've learned. I've 
broken a just an insane amount of stuff. Like if I could redo my car again, there would be a lot of things I'd do differently. I'd go for L80, yeah. I'd go E85 right off the bat, you know, stuff like that. So just many, many different ways uh, to do this. Uh, and none of them are wrong. It's just kind of like your budget and how much skill and experience you have in, in building a car like this. Uh, so if you guys have any other questions about R2 builds, I mean, I think we've tried to cover as much as humanly possible in this video. Um, please list them down below. I love talking cars. Obviously, I have a YouTube channel uh, and I love commenting back and interacting with you guys. So you can just comment down below any questions you have about my car. Uh, and then obviously, Will, you're going to hop in the comment section as well. I, know I will be in the comment section. You love section. talking cars. So if you guys have any questions, guys, we'll get as specific as you want. Uh, we have no problem talking money at the exact times. Uh, horsepower numbers, I know yours hasn't really been on the dyno lately, but we can assume yeah. at 3,900 pounds with 148 mile an hour trash speed, you're at 1,000 wheel all day. I think right? so. I mean, given the last time I was on the dyno, I was pushing about 16 degrees of timing okay. and 16 pounds of boost, and I made 840. And now I'm pushing about 20 degrees and uh, uh, 20 pounds of boost, 22 uh, when I go the next time. So I think right. I'm around there. It's hard to say because right. dynos vary, but right. the track Whatever. is always true. Exactly. And both Will and I tune on HP tuners. Um, I started off getting tuned uh, from Mike at Straight Line. So did he yep. in Joliet, Illinois. Great guys at Straight Line. Nick, the owner, is awesome. Um, yeah. And then we moved on to just kind of tuning ourselves. Knock on steering wheel. We haven't blown up our own cars with our own tune. So, that, so that's always a positive. Uh, with that being said, guys, uh, let me know if you like this kind of content. If you did, uh, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, comment whatever you want down below. Subscribe if you're new. All that awesome some YouTube stuff. I hope some of you guys that have subscribed to my channel for the LS1 F body V8 American type of stuff enjoyed this video. Uh, and I'm just gonna leave you guys with uh, some shenanigans that Will and I filmed a little bit earlier in the day. I mean, we had professional stunt drivers That's uh, right. film for us, not in Indiana, but in a small town in Mexico. Right? Right, right, right. Be, right on the border there between Indiana and Illinois. Exactly. There's there's, it's unincorporated Mexico. Yes. Uh, enjoy, have a good day guys, and I'll see you in the next video.